the Shroud of Turin is one of the most researched and studied relics in church history and profoundly impacts many who encounter its mystery. As a person of faith, looking at it through the eyes of faith, um, I don't think it can help but, uh, but touch your heart. Something that we can look on, not only to bolster our faith in those moments of weakness, but also to deepen our faith and our appreciation, our intimacy with Christ. Join Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry as they examine the science of the Shroud through the lens of faith. Really interesting scientific information that I, we didn't know about, uh, like the pollen from all the different regions of the world. That's all, as the shroud traveled around, it picked that up. Some of the mites, uh, things like that was really interesting to me. I mean, it, this made you really want to believe it a lot more. It's impressive. Like, humanly, I don't think, like, that is another level of love. It's not a... a, a I'm going to see people like, oh, I love you, I'll give you a chocolate. No. I'm giving you more than my life. I'm giving you my suffering. Asking both experts and disciples, who do you say I am? Um, as far as who the man of the shroud is, I, as a, as a person of faith and kind of reviewing the evidence there, it, it seems that a convincing argument can be made that it's, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Visit patchworkheart.org slash shroud to learn more and get exclusive behind the scenes updates for your support. The St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, in partnership with Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network, present a podcast for divorced and separated Catholics. Hi, and welcome to a podcast from the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. My name is Anne DeSantis. I'm the executive director, and I'm joined by the president of the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, Mickey Kelly. Mickey, thanks so much for joining me and all of us on this podcast. Always great to be here, Anne. And I believe we are about halfway through this series right now, episode five. That is exactly right. So this is our podcast that's for divorced and separated Catholics, people who are wounded or affected by divorce. Um, and this is a series called 10 Tips to be, you know, to find healing after a divorce. And this one, this podcast is, is developing your faith in greater ways. So what we're going to talk about during this podcast are ways that you can grow and turn to your faith, you know, because when you're going through a time of trial, such as a divorce or separation or even an annulment, there is sometimes some suffering that is involved. And turning to your faith is, is what will help uh, you to grow. So without further ado, then, Mickey, I didn't know if you had any words of advice for our audience on ways that they can grow in faith, especially those affected by divorce. Well... And let's face it, I honestly, well, from our experience too, and it's, there's like, we'll feel a sense of confusion, we'll feel a sense of rejection. You know, there's like, there's a lot of stages and something that the um, a top psychologist will tell you, whether it's divorce or the, it, it kind of feels like a death, sort of speak, when the parent, like, feel like you, you get this life sucked out of you, sort of uh, generally speaking, when the parent, it, it, this has been really relatable to me with, um, with, with my journey, which was very long until I discovered the board, which, you know, wasn't until about, you know, very recently. But one of the things that I, I would really, tell is and we we actually talked about this in previous episodes too we've touched on it but this is what well, will be a very good reminder to reiterate anyway one of the things that i want the, the top suggestion i would give for anyone who is going through this life-changing stage is the first thing you must acknowledge is that especially to children of divorced parents it's not your fault. 
things happen with your parents and there seems to be seems that they're not on the same level for whatever reason and always remember that you must be true to yourself no matter how rough things can be that's great advice because it's almost an, a recognition of what you're going through in the suffering because sometimes when I know for myself that sometimes when I chase after the whys and hows of life, like why did this happen or why did this person die or why have I suffered because of this incident, then it helps when you look at it as almost like that redemptive suffering, meaning that there's a purpose and a reason that we unite that, right? We unite that to the cross, no matter what that suffering is. And especially if you're a person who's uh, gone through something related to divorce, separation, or annulment. And even as Mickey and I have talked a, a lot about on this podcast, an adult child of divorce, which also has its sufferings too in early life and also even, you know, as life moves along. So this podcast is all about ways that to grow in faith and, you know, turning to your faith in your trials. And I just want to refer to this article that I found. It's actually from our own Philly magazine online, which is catholicphilly.com. It's by an author by the name of Gia Myers. And the article is entitled 10 Ways to Grow in Catholic Faith for 2022. Now, admittedly, this article is not specifically for Catholics. I mean, excuse me, for it is for Catholics, um, admittedly for divorced or separated, but really is great advice just for all of us. And uh, I'll just read the first three to start out was um, she gives the recommendation of observing monthly devotions. And some of them are like, say, January would be the most holy name of Jesus. Uh, February is the Holy Family. March would be St. Joseph. April would be the Holy Eucharist. Uh, now, you can refer to this article if you go to 10 Ways to Grow in Catholic Faith for 2022 on catholicphilly.com. But I think that is a really good way, and even for Catholics affected by divorce, is to observe those monthly devotions. For instance, June is the sacred heart of Jesus, and um, July is the precious blood of Jesus. So the, it, the article goes through all of the months, but I think that's also one way that you really can grow in faith. Number two in this article says incorporating spiritual reading. And of course, you know, there's so many great Catholic books and all you need to do really is just um, just Google it or even go into Amazon and key Catholic books and see what's out there. But some of the ones that are mentioned in this article are the introduction to the devout life by St. Francis de Sales, the interior castle by St. Teresa of Avila, the Story of a Soul by St. Therese of Lisieux, and they're just a few. And some other good Catholic authors would be, and she mentions here, Scott Hahn, Dr. Scott Hahn, Chris Stefanik, and Matthew Kelly or some. Number three on this list is to enhance your Marian devotion. You know, our Blessed Mother is our mother, and she's praying for us. And in the article, it mentions just simply praying a Hail Mary or a Rosary. So, Mickey, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about devotion to Our Lady. And I must say, she really hits it, uh, Gia Myers. I, I don't think I know her very well, but I know she, I, I know she writes articles for Catholic Philly time after time. But honestly, I, I think, more, and I remember a priest, that there was a priest in my parish one time. Now, he's, now he became a hermit recently. I don't know why, but... <laughs> As I think was Scott's plan. But um, one of the things that we really have to understand is that no, I always think of every time I like walk around when I see like a mom with like little kids, like you, I always see them like, you know, holding your hands, be like, okay. And but I mean, I, I know sometimes like there's like this like hip thing where like they have this like, you know, like a kind of like a leash, like you, know, you, know, you kind of like a leash you have like for like a dog, but they have like a same thing for like a toddler. So they don't go run off somewhere or something and get lost so it's like they attach it to the kid and if they go let's say about two yards boom they stop right there i'm like whatever happened there's a hole in the child's hand but anyway they go back to 
what I'm trying to get at here is Mary is our mother, no matter what. And she's always begging for her children to come home to the church. And one of the most stark, one of the most stark things that I really enjoy watching when I, one of my favorite hobbies is people watching anyway, just, I just want to do it in like, you know, in a creepy tense, of course, but <laughs> one of the things that I, I enjoy is watching how, you know, a mom with her kids holding their hands and, you know, making sure that they don't wander off. They stay close. And I think that's also what's important, too, is that Mary is holding your hand through everything that you're going through. It may be some of your triumphs. It may be some of your times of tribulation. She is there for you. Just like how she was there with Jesus through all of his pivotal moments of his life from the time he was born in, in Bethlehem to Calvary. So says the, one of the most beautiful in one of the most beautiful statues that I really enjoy is, is always praying in front of the Piata in which Mary is holding her son, Jesus scarred and lifeless. And if you see the, the look on her face, is the look of the sorrow and the the sadness. But she knew full well that he had a destiny to fulfill. He had a mission in life. And so do you. And Mary will guide you. It is through her that she will hold your hand and guide you to the heart of Jesus. I appreciate your reflection there because you know, our Blessed Mother is, it, as I said right before you spoke, I mean, she is our mother and she's with us from the moment we're conceived until the end of our lives. And that's why we say in that prayer, Hail Mary, um, to be with us, right, at the hour of our death. Because uh, she she's holding, as you said, she's holding her hand. So for you who are listening, because this podcast is for divorced and separated, those who are affected by it. Um, she's with you and she loves you. She, she knows and, and sees what you've been through in your life. And especially you who have been wounded by uh, relationships and the ending of a relationship that meant so much to you, um, a covenantal relationship at that, your marriage. And so, the, you know, as I always say on our podcast that the St. Raymond Onatus cares and the church cares and we're here for you. So I just want to make sure that I reiterate that over and over again to let you know that you can reach out to us for that free pastoral consultation with a Mercedarian friar. All you need to do is go to nonatus.org and just send us a message through the contact form and we will set up that appointment and you can have as many of those as you need. Um, so then I'm going to read the rest of this uh, or the next three um, points uh, on this 10 ways to grow in your Catholic faith. And from this author, she says, number four is make a new saint friend, meaning that, you know, learn about the saints, pray to the saints, but read about the saints too. And there's so many great saints uh, to learn about. I think it's un really unending, if you think about it, how many Catholic saints there are. Um, and she says, and remember, you can never have too many friends, especially saint friends. Uh, number five on this list is attend an extra mass. You know, you might not be able to get to daily mass because of work. And especially if you are divorced or separated and now you're back to work or working more than you were before. Um, but you can maybe, just maybe, you might be able to attend an extra mass a week. Um, some churches offer nighttime masses. Some churches offer lunchtime. I know that in Philadelphia that there's a few that, that offer actually like a noontime. Um, and I know in my area, there's some that offer one night a week, maybe a 7 p.m. Or if that doesn't work, you know, there's always the Saturday morning mass that you could maybe try to do. Um, number six is Friday penances. And she says that sacrifices aren't for Lent only. Fridays outside of Lent are also days of abstinence or fasting. You can go meatless on Fridays throughout the year. 
or you may want to dedicate extra prayers or small acts of charity for your weekly sacrifices. Um, now, of course, we're taping this during Lent, and um, and I believe that it that it will will air, you know, right at the beginning. This one is actually right airing at the beginning of April, um, so we're still in the Lenten season. But just remember that those sacrifices aren't just for the Lenten season. Um, Mickey, I didn't know if you had, had anything to say on sacrifices, because don't you think they can go all year round? They don't just have to be during Lent. Well, absolutely, Ann. I mean, I, I, I think, well, I think you kind of, you missed it quite well, actually, I think by a mere three years um, prior to the Second Vatican Council, there was a rule that Fridays throughout the year were, you know, fasting and abstinence. And I saw to see um, a bit of like a trend among some of the traditional Catholics. Well, I'm not just saying like that those that attend Latin mass um, on every given Sunday, but also those who openly ex to who frequently accept the church teachings. And I'm hoping that we can really reclaim that in the church, in the Catholic Church of the United States, especially, you know, the, the state it's in at the moment. But well, that's a topic for a different episode, of course, or podcast title. So, but they get back on point. Um, one of the things that I have been doing for the past couple of years on Fridays is I go meatless. And it's not just for Lent, but it's year round. And you, and I, I remember you, you telling me one time yourself, and you can relate to uh, my practice as well. And I would also go to confession. I would go either on a Friday, uh, when I have when I have time, of course, or I would go on a Saturday, usually before the the visual mass. I usually go. There there was a time like I was going weekly, but then I kind of fell track. So I was like, okay, I'll go biweekly. And those are like some things like you really have to. And Lent is actually a perfect time for you to do most of these things. Now, fasting and absent does not have to just pertain to food it can be things like i remember father dennis gill the rector at the basilica saints peter and paul cathedral here in philadelphia he actually was approached by one of the reporters um on ash wednesday and the reporter asked father gill what are you giving up and i'm actually stealing this because he said it in the homily for the first sunday of lent this year he said, I'm giving up sin. If you think about it for a moment, there's some truth to that. Now, there's nothing wrong with giving up chocolate. There's nothing wrong with giving up pleasures from Ash Wednesday to Easter. There's nothing wrong at all. But if you, will, if you are willing to give up pleasures, you must do something in the, their places. Such as maybe you want to throw at you want to try to build a habit of adding a new prayer to your prayer repertoire, even your routine. So instead of just doing like your morning prayers from your from the Hallow app or the Magnifica, why don't you incorporate at least a rosary? Now, granted, I don't think many of us will have the span to get the whole rosary done, you know, in a matter of 12 to 15 minutes. But if you just pray at least a decade, let's say when you get up in the morning and then when you have your break, you pray the second decade. When you're on lunch, you pray the third decade. When you're on your break before you go, before you clock out of work, the fourth decade, and then maybe a fifth decade after you're done eating your dinner, boom, you did the full rules, but in part, but in pieces. Now, if you've been doing that, why don't you say the whole thing? Just set 10, 15 minutes aside during the day and say the whole rosary. That's equivalent to whatever your break is at work. It doesn't kill you. Even St. John Paul the Great reminds us that he wants to see more people praying the rosary when they're commuting, when they're at work, when they get up in the morning. The list goes on. And even Padre Pia, who I understand and your family has a wonderful devotion to him, and I think it's really moving, that the, the rosary is a weapon of our times. 
And I think there was another saint that once said, I forget who it is, but a Catholic without a rosary, it's like a soldier without a rifle. And I think that's really a powerful statement right there because every Catholic should be carrying a rosary with them. It's, it's their, it's, I mean, I am for people that want to have a right to own a weapon as long as they use it properly for self-defense, things like that. But for Catholics, every Catholic should have a rosary in their pocket. And it should not just be in their pocket, but they should be praying it wherever they are, whether outside the abortion facility, whether they're in an adoration chapel fulfilling a holy hour, or they're out in the public square. Perfectly said. I'm so glad you brought up the rosary because, you know, it's the gospel. It really is. It's praying the gospel. And some people find it maybe hard to concentrate during a rosary and hard to keep your mind focused on Jesus and on the prayers. But my suggestion is take each meditation, right? Each decade, whatever that is, whatever mystery you're doing, whether it's the sorrowful, the glorious, uh, whatever it is. And thinking about also not only what, the, what happened in Jesus's time, but also people that you can pray for in your life right now. Like for instance, when you're praying the crucifixion, which is one of the, the last, the fifth sorrowful mystery. What my mind would go to are people that I know right now who are dying, or who are suffering. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things. Say when you pray for the birth of Jesus Christ, which is the third joyful mystery. During that, you could pray for those that you know that are either giving birth or pregnant throughout the world. So it's a way to keep your mind focused because you're, yes, you're praying those mysteries of Christ, but you're also relating it to uh, what's going on in your life right now. And um, I want to go back to also this article, which is from catholicphilly.com, pray 10 ways to grow in faith. It's a new article actually from 2022. I'm going to go back to the last three of these 10 suggestions that the author has. And number seven, she has is embrace generosity. And she says that there's so much consumerism in modern life. Lots of advertisements for bombard us for new and trendy clothes, makeup, designer handbags, etc. We're called to the stewardship of God's graces and to share the gifts God has bestowed upon us. So I think that's a good thing to think about. Now, of course, we keep saying we're in the Lenten season, so it's the perfect time for almsgiving. But, you know, generosity is something that you can make it part of your lifestyle, right? I mean, whether it be giving clothing. I know that in my family, we have a place called a Vietnam Veterans Association that comes to our house. I call up and they come maybe once a month and we give a lot of our clothing and small household items that we want, gently used items that we want to donate. So, I mean, that's one small way that you can be generous. But, of course, giving to your own church, tithing or to a religious organization. I have to make a shout out too, right? Because I mean, we ourselves are a Catholic nonprofit 501c3. I mean, if you're wanting to feel generous, you can even go to our own website at nonatas.org and go on the donate button there because we would, we would love to um, partner with you in some way, whether it be a one-time donation or whatever you can do. I mean, we appreciate even a dollar. <laughs> we appreciate your prayers, I mean, for that matter even if you can't afford to donate anything. But um, I do believe that embracing generosity is a way that, to grow in your faith. Uh, number eight is to joyfully share your faith. And in this article, she says that you can simply live joyfully in your faith journey and others will likely notice when they ask you the source of your joy, you can tell them about the joy you find in your Catholic faith. Uh, number nine is to practice divine mercy. Now we've talked about the, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy on other podcasts before. Of course, it's a very special prayer. And you could simply just Google that and, and learn about the prayer itself. But um, you use rosary beads to pray it. And it usually takes, um, I would say, even less than half the time of a, of a rosary prayer. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful prayer. And it's all about um, God's mercy 
And she says in the article that the word forgiveness is not commonly used these days. There's a lot more talk of recompense and revenge, but it's best that we forgive others and also ourselves for past transgressions. So uh, that divine mercy is not just a prayer, but it's a way of life. And number 10, the last one is a word of the year. Now I'll explain what that means. Um, she says that if perhaps you, perhaps you wanna grow in hospitality in the coming near, year, you could select the word welcome. If you've had difficulty forgiving yourself and others, you could select the word forgiveness or redeemed. So I think what the author is saying here in this article, the 10 ways to grow in faith from Catholic Philly is saying that you could meditate like say for 2022, um, do you want your, the, your word to be something like hospitality? That you wanna be more hospitable to others, whether it be opening up your home, um, trying to make more friends with others in a, in a godly way. So think about that, a word of the year. I think that's a good, um, a good way of thinking about growing in your faith. Uh, Mickey, did you have any other words of advice in terms of this audience? I mean, obviously we're talking to our friends here that are affected by divorce and separation. Um, which ways do you think, and maybe I'll add to this, that they can best grow in their faith during a tough time? Well, first of all, prayer is very essential. And I think that especially as we are somewhat I say a little more than halfway through our Lenten journey and I just want to let you know that there are times you will fall but you have two choices after the fall a you get up and you fight harder or you're just going to be like the boxer waiting for the referee to say 10 and you're out truthfully I would much rather get myself up and fight harder, spiritually, of course. And one of the things that I have learned over the years is that it takes courage to not let some of the problems of your firsthand problems really get the best of you. If you look at some of the movies that center around underdogs, whether they are true stories or things that were just made out of a cloud or something each of these underdogs at one point they were very close to giving up I always remember i mean and we live in we're in the greater philadelphia area and we have a a fictional philosopher and an underdog by the name of rocky balboa and i always remember in the third movie where after 10 title defenses, he actually would finally lose to the top contender, even though he didn't want to go end his boxing career, you know, on that, you know, note. But his former opponent saw something in him that could get everything back because he knew that Rocky's world was crumbling after that loss to Clubber Lang. And Apollo took him, took Rocky under his wing and they began the training for the rematch. And at first Rocky was just, you know, he was really sluggish. He was lazy. He didn't really take pride in the whole process. But then his wife, Adrian, you know, helped him come to his senses. And then finally he just flourished and he, and in three rounds, he did defeat Clever Lang to regain his title and everything around him. Fast forward, the last Rocky movie, you would say, that came out back in 06, Rocky had a dialogue with his son, who feels like the whole pressure of the world are mounting on him just because of the last name and the reputation and everything. And Rocky tells him that it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how, how, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's about what you can take and keep moving forward. That's what winning's about.
Yeah, well, of course, you know, you, you just said something that is inspirational to me. And of course, you and I are both from the, you're from this, the Philadelphia area. I'm from the greater Philadelphia area, right? But um, that character of Rocky, I think symbolizes also for all of us that life is not easy, right? And it's a, it's a symbol also that no matter what, you'll get through this, but you do have to take that first step. And so I actually pulled up, I actually pulled up the speech right when you were speaking here. Um, and I just want to say before I read this is that, of course, we know uh, this is, ha <laughs> uh, this is not, um, you know, it's not specifically Catholic, but you know that we can find inspiration sometimes uh, in the secular world, whether they be movies or uh, other sports figures, whoever it is, whatever it is, but uh, we can find inspiration that isn't against our faith, right? And so he says in that movie, now this is from the movie of 2006, the Rocky Balboa, he says, let me tell you something you already know, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's very tough. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it'll beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't how hard you hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying, excuse me, I don't mean to like lose my spot here. Um, that's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying to, to you're not where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what, no matter what happens. You're my son and you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't going to have a life. And that's uh, from the movie Rocky Balboa. And I, I find that inspirational because, you know, we can think about boxing, right? And he's talking about hitting. But for us, for you who are listening, um, that represents what you go through, right? And the, and the trouble that you've been through and the pain that you've been through. And related to this divorce separation or the, the pain, the trials that you've been through, is that I think what, what I just read is telling you that, you know, and I think the main point in that little verse there is that it ain't how hard you hit. It's a how hard you can get hit. And we, you know, we're not talking physically here, but keep moving forward, right? And that's what Christ wants you to do. He wants you to keep moving forward no matter what has happened in your life. And you can do that because it is true that with Christ, we can do anything. Now, we know that there's suffering. As Catholics, we accept that. That's part of what life is about. It's not a magic wand that says, well, you know, you can be or do whatever you want in this whole wide world, right? Because some things are not what God wants for us or what, what God wants for you. So um, I just think it's a great lesson for all of us. Um, and maybe we could spend a little time just talking about the passion of Christ because uh, I do think it relates to it, Mickey. I don't know if you had anything to say about that. When you look at what Christ suffered, but that there was an Easter, Easter Sunday. And for you who are listening, there's also an Easter Sunday too. One of my favorite quotes about e per tying in with the Easter season uh, by Venerable Fulton Sheen is, without a good Friday, there can be no Easter. And I think you really can sum that. I mean, I think that really sums up your point right there, Ann. Without a good Friday in your life, there can be no Easter. And what we have to understand is that, yes, Jesus. You know, people ask, well, what's so good about Good Friday if Jesus was betrayed, you know, denied three times, he was scourged to nearly he was scourged you know he was bleeding he was looked lifeless he looked like um he went through hours of torture or something you know things like that he fell three times on the way to calvary maybe he fell more but who knew 
he had a, a a woman by the name of Veronica um had the first selfie in the world according to catholic you know according to the catholics and that's a joke by the way uh <laughs> but yeah because jesus you know he suffered so much too he was he fell down he took so much because he was willing to lay down his life for us even he said it during the last supper in john 15 13 no greater love than the one who lays down his life for his friends and in this and especially as we're going as we are about to wrap up our Lenten journey we have to understand what sacrifice is. Jesus is the ultimate example of it. And the reason he hung on that cross was not because he was a nice guy or anything like that, but he took on every sin in the world, whether it was the priest who molested children to, you know, for his own gain or whatever, for the woman who sought abortion when she had no other options or no, no person to turn to when everyone just walked out of the room. For those who are fleeing war-torn countries, especially those in Ukraine, and we just want to also just say, I just want to say, I just want to take a moment to say to anyone in Ukraine that our prayers are with you and just know that Jesus is with you. And Jesus thought of you when he hung on that cross thousands of years ago. And you are his ch children, no matter what happens. To the veteran who is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder after a tour or two in Iraq or Afghanistan or any war, if they're still alive. To the woman who is trying to get out of the endless cycle of abuse from the boyfriend or the ex-fiance or the husband. We want you to know that Jesus hung on the cross for you and the person who inflicted harm against you because he loved you first. You were first loved when you were knit in your mom's, mom's room, as the prophet Jeremiah reminds us. And you always know that you're never far from God's mercy his mercy is endless all you must do is seek it seeking you shall find as the gospel of matthew puts it amen and it's interesting that you just said that because we're, we're actually recording this of course we record them early i don't want to break that to our audience here but <laughs> that we're pre-recorded but we're very much with you though even if it's not live, um, is that today's daily mass gospel. The gospel was the ask, Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall seek, you know? And so I, I'm interesting that you just said that, that that was today. And um, it's good for all of us to remember that, isn't it? That we will find when we seek because God is a good God and he does care enough to help us and not to leave us in our pain um, I just thought I'd like end this, we can end this podcast with one more good resource that I found online um, on BeliefNet, um, Seven Ways to Strengthen Your Catholic Faith. And some of them are repetitive, but I'm just going to read through them so that we have some extra ones to, to grow in your faith is going to Eucharistic adoration. That's number one. And how important is that? Um, because that's really being in the presence of, of your Savior. And so taking that time doesn't have to be a holy hour, but if you can just do a little bit of time is better than none. So when you can stop into a church and say some prayers in front of the blessed sacrament, but if you can make that holy hour, that's even better. Um, the next one it says it's, is to join a church ministry. And that means, you know, there's all kinds of ministries and nonprofits that you can be a part of. Hint, hint. <laughs> you know, we're a nonprofit, we're a Catholic 501c3. We could always use your help and your prayers. So be sure to reach out to us because 
Um, we do have opportunities, especially for prayer. Um, we get a lot of prayer requests, so I'd love to send you some of those. Um, another one is to pray the rosary, which I think we talked a little bit about. When we talked about the Blessed Mother, um, helping people in need. Of course, they're everywhere. They're not just uh, where you think they'd be, but they're your neighbors, your friends, people that you know very well, um, and also people that you possibly work with. But that's a way that you can grow in your Catholic faith. Uh, receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now, I know we've talked about this on other podcasts, but that's a huge way that you can grow in your faith. And in this article, it says that it's, power, it's a powerful way to ask God's forgiveness for our sins and a powerful way to receive that mercy. It's an invitation to start anew. Um, next one here is participate in a retreat or a workshop. And I should have mentioned that before because I think that's a really good one. Um, now, in the Philadelphia area, we have a wonderful place called the Malvern Retreat House. So I would just say Google that if you live in our area, or even if you don't, you can, you can gladly come here to the Philadelphia area. But finding a good retreat house, um, and it says the blessings of fellowship and friendship also enhance our lives in amazing ways. You know, the people that you meet when you go on these retreats. Another one is spending time reading and meditating on God's word. And there's something called Lec Lectio Divina where you can read a passage and then read it again slowly. And then you can pick out words that speak to you and then reflect on those words and maybe even imagine what it was like in Jesus's time when you're, when you're meditating and you're thinking about the, uh, the, the sentences and the stories that you're reading. But that's a, an excellent way to grow. And that wraps up that article with the seven ways to grow in your Catholic faith. Um, so before we end, Mickey, did you have anything else that you wanted to add about growing in faith, especially for our friends who are affected by divorce? Most important thing to keep, especially through the, the before you go through the storm of divorce and everything, is know that your faith, keep it intact. Clinch to it. Find people that you can, you know, spend time with to befriend or confide in. I can promise you those steps right there will help you get through so much. Most important thing to do is seek spiritual direction. Seek help from a priest. And always remember, don't give in to the fact that you're not welcome in the house of God when you go through divorce. In fact, you are still welcome there. You're welcome to go to church every Sunday. But of course, you may be at a state of mortal sin, so refrain from communion. That goes for the pro-abortion politicians, of course. <laughs> but also, too. Take that time to heal, seek help, and most importantly, be willing to be there, be there for your kids, especially through monumental achievements and times of sorrow, woe, and triumphs. You are still the parent of the child, and it will do them a service if you are there during the holidays, birthdays, graduations, the whole when they have their whole life ahead of them. And you should, you know, watch that child grow. Never forget that. I was so blessed that my dad got to see me grow. Despite it all. And also off, you know, at times, you know, draw the line when I was you know, out of line, times where I needed that motivation, you know, to do better. Or even that balance that's needed, you know, with the, in the, you know, you know, with the parents. And also learn about your faith, grow in your faith, ask questions about your faith. Don't be afraid.
don't be afraid. I mean, everything that you said, I think was just pure wisdom. So this podcast is one that you might want to listen to again. May I ask all of you too, who are listening to let your friends know about this podcast, because uh, this is our way to do outreach to you who are wounded by divorce and separation. And this podcast, this whole series is 10 tips to grow in your faith, especially uh, those affected by divorce. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. It's called Philly No Notis. I want to make a special shout out to our two friends, which are Patchwork Heart Ministry, Bill Snyder, the founder, and Fiat Ministry Network. The founder is Kent Kolhoski and his assistant, Jennifer Sinclair, because they do so much to share these podcasts. May I ask you also to like and subscribe to Patchwork Heart Ministry and go to patchworkheartradio.org. In addition to liking and subscribing at Fiat Ministry Network on Facebook, because they're doing wonderful work in Catholic ministry, and we're very grateful for them. Mickey, I'm very grateful for you as our president and our leader of this foundation. Uh, thank you for joining us, as always. And thank you so much for having me. God bless everyone, and be sure to, as I said, make that appointment with a Mercedarian friar for your free pastoral consultation at nonatis.org. We will see you all next month here for our podcast for Catholics affected by divorce and separation. Have a great month. We'll see you then. Thank you for listening to this podcast. For more information about the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, visit nonatus.org or email director.srnf at gmail.com. Today, many students go to college with numerous questions about their faith, yearning to know if the seed planted in them as a child is both true and practical. Using the miracle on the road to Emmaus as a model, young adult ministers conversed weekly for three months with college students about the most pressing questions they had about the Catholic faith. As they journeyed together virtually, something amazing happened. Doubts disappeared, fears faded, and Jesus revealed that he is still alive. Hearts Burning Within Us, the latest book from Patchwork Heart Ministry, is a result of that grace-infused conversation. It is the perfect back-to-school gift for recent high school graduates and current college students. Get your copy for them today at patchworkheart.org or by calling 424-704-3278. That's 424-704-3278.